Greetings everybody. Doing a video on the tape collection here because uh, I figured uh, it's probably been a while since I've updated the collection or made a video about the collection and I've gotten a couple of other tapes as you might have seen in previous videos but if you haven't uh, here we go for the doing this for the second time here and I'm probably not going to be editing this video too much because I want to show a lot of the cassettes and um, I'll be doing a separate video on the CD collection here because I have probably, geez, probably a lot more CDs than I have cassettes. So let's get right into it. We'll start with the A's. Right up here we have Alice Cooper, Lace and Whiskey. Good album, if you like Alice Cooper. And then Aerosmith's Angel. This is actually a something that they do or did. Um, I think it had a couple, just two, two songs on it. Um, Angel, five minutes fifty seconds, and then Girl Keeps Coming Apart at four minutes twelve seconds. So I guess it's sort of like a sample you'd get for like a couple dollars. Uh, or maybe they would just give it out for promotional. I don't know. I wasn't alive back then. Um, then we've got a missing one. And that's Enya's Watermark. That's currently behind the camera in my big tape deck. Uh, we have Beastie Boys, Licensed to Ill. What color is this? It's a clear. No, it's like a pukey white whitish gray color so that's that one pretty cool BC boys are always good then we have Billy Joel's the bridge Another good album I'm gonna have to stand up because I've been sitting down for quite a while uh, then we have blue oyster cults with uh, some enchanted everything I think this is sort of a collection of some of their best songs because uh, it has don't fear the reaper Godzilla, Are You Ready to Rock, ETI, Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and We Gotta Get Out of This Place. So this is sort of like, a, I guess, a um, compilation of some of their greatest hits without actually calling them the greatest hits. Um, I'm just going to kind of go with a bunch. Uh, we got The Eagles, The Long Run, right here on cassette. Some of these are homebrew. Oh yeah, we have uh, Chainsaw Kittens, Pop Hairs, because I'm into that weird stuff, and you'll see I also have another album down here that's pretty good for that. Uh, we have Earth, Wind, and Fire, Spirit. Uh, my mom actually collect Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, for my mom vicariously, because she kind of got me into uh, EWF when I was a kid uh, with the whole... Do you remember? I'm probably going to stop because one, I can't sing, and two, because I don't want to get a copyright strike. Um, we have... Oh, hang on. We have another Earth, Wind, and Fire, Groove. This one might actually be the one that has, uh, yeah, September on it. Do you remember? Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a copyright strike if I keep doing that. Um, this is just an a, like, cheap, generic, toss-away kind of case because it's all I had at the time. Not necessarily a toss away, but whatever. Then we have EMF with uh, Sherbert Dip. I don't know what EMF stands for. Maybe it's the initials of the people in the band. Then we have we'll going to the F's. We have Foreigner 4. Probably their fourth album. That's why it's called Foreigner 4. Or maybe they're all from different countries converging into one new country and starting a band. And there's four of them. So Foreigner, four, I don't know. Uh, then we have Frank Sinatra, Come Fly With Me. I think this was a part of my grandma's cassette tape collection because she had uh, a lot of artists similar to Frank Sinatra. I can't name them off because I don't know them all by head, by memory. Probably some Bing Cosby in there. Not Bill Cosby, Bing Cosby. Two completely different people. Don't get them confused, please. Because then you'll be hated by the music community. And then more Frank Sinatra. Greatest Hits Volume 
numero uno. So I have a thing for Frank Sinatra. Well, not a thing for Frank Sinatra, but I like Frank Sinatra. You know what else I like? Bootleg cassette tapes of ghosts. Uh, or just bootleg tapes in general, I guess. Uh, this is a bootleg of Meliora. You can tell because on the J card, the JPEG on the J card has been stretched a little bit uh, to fit the correct dimensionals of the dimension space required by the J card to fit within the jewel case. Flip that right side up. So that's again Ghost Meliora. And uh, there are some, there is some crossover. I have Meliora on CD and also digital. So uh, there are, as well as prequel. So there are some, I also have it on vinyl too. I might bust out the vinyl and show you a collection of that. Cause there is some very different artwork for each Ghost album that is on not only the cassette, but the CD and the digital and the vinyl. So there's like four different covers. There's four different covers just of Prequel alone. Um, but for, let me see if I can actually pull one out here. Probably have them all to the front. This is gonna take, I didn't even think of this. Uh, where's Yora? Right here. So the big picture, right? You can see two eye, uh, like you can see all the detail within the large photo here, but there's also two eyes, a hat, these are supposed to be teeth, that's a nose. So there's definitely different, uh, different layers to Ghost's artwork, whether you're looking at it digitally on your phone or the CD cover, which I'll pull out eventually, or whether you're looking at the vinyl, there's like different perspectives almost. And that was done on purpose from Ghost. So that's that's one thing I like about Ghost's artwork. Uh, moving back to the uh, cassette tapes, we have two from INXS. We have uh, Kick and Listen to Thieves, or Listen Like Thieves, rather, not Listen to Thieves. So, excuse me, it's probably best to not Listen to Thieves. Uh, I'm probably just going to go through I have uh, Stone Free from Jimi Hendrix, John Denver, I don't know why he has a picture of Steve Irwin, rest in peace Steve Irwin, um, Kenny G, always got to have some Kenny G in your collection, at least one of your collections. Then we have uh, Killer Dwarfs, still haven't listened to this cassette, but Killer Dwarfs, man, they're going to kill you and they're dwarves, what's so cool about that, or what's not cool about Killer Dwarfs? Uh, everything is cool about Killer Dwarfs. Dude, even if they're not gonna kill you, they're still a pretty badass. So what I'm trying to say here with this. Now we got some Zeppelin, we got Physical Graffiti, and also Houses of the Holy. Yes, we do. Found those at a local record shop. I picked up a lot of these, um, at that local record shop, I think, and also some of them at local uh, Newbury Comics in my area, which shut down. And then we got some, we got some Metallica. We got and Justice for actually, you know what? Hang on, this joke would be better if I set it up this way. We've got Metallica, Metallica, Black Album features such songs as. Enter Sandman, everybody's favorite. And then we got the 598 EP, which was ironically a little bit more than 598, but we're gonna overlook that detail. And then, and Justice for All. So hang on, we have, we have Metallica's Metallica, Metallica's 598 EP, and Justice for All. That was kind of the joke, it sounded better in my head, but you know, I executed it kind of poorly, but I hope I hope it still landed somewhat. That was. This is a music channel, not a comedy channel. So we're gonna move on to some Motley Crue. We've got Motley Crue's Motley Crue, which is actually not Motley Crue's Motley Crue. It's Motley Crue's Shout of the Devil. It's just the J card in here is their first uh, Live Wire 
Uh, it's what I'm going to call it. It's what I'm going to refer to it as because it's the first song in the album. So instead of being Motley Crue's Live Wire, it's Motley Crue's Shout of the Devil. And then we have Motley Crue's Girls, Girls, Girls. Because who doesn't like Girls, Girls, Girls? Don't answer that question. Well... And then we have Motley Crue's Theater of Pain, which is what I like to refer to my life as. It's a theater of pain. Not so much anymore, but it used to be. And you know what my favorite food is? Meatloaf. Another poorly executed joke. Um, I'm gonna... It's bad out of hell, Meatloaf. Moving on. Moving on. 90% of the people have probably just clicked away already. Uh, now we got some Pearl Jam. And I just wanna, like, I want to say, I do not like these J-cards. I have a couple more albums that have these J-cards that go all the way up to form sort of like a taco around the cassette. No, I don't like that. Ew, it's gross. I don't like it. Because I like being able to see the cassette tape when it's in the jewel case, when I'm looking at it like this, this one does the same thing. I don't like it. I don't I don't know why anybody thought that would be a good idea. Uh, so on the theme of Zeppelin, we got some Floyd, man. We got some Floyd, dude. This is Pink Floyd's works, man. Pink Floyd works, bro. Dang. Uh, now, my, my, my Grail album from Floyd is The Wall, which I think everybody's Grail album from Floyd is. Um, and my Grail album from Zeppelin is Dark Side, because who doesn't like Dark Side? Then we have some, um, uh, Quiet Riot, which I think a lot of people are doing today, uh, especially in current times. They're rioting quietly within their homes. Topical joke that didn't land very well. I'm sorry, this is, uh, Don't... Uh, something. Quiet Riot. Good album. I recommend it. Then we have some Queen's Reich, which uh, I have a lot more Queen's Reich CDs. Probably see them in the next video. This is their album Empire, featuring uh, the best man that I can, or the best I can, which is a song about being the best person you can be, which is very inspirational. And then we got some Deep Breakfast Man from Ray Lynch. This is the shit. If you're ever wanting to just chill out and just relax and just vibe out to some to some groovy tunes, I would definitely recommend Deep Breakfast from Le Ray Lynch. I almost said Lay Wrench, but that's not his name. His name is Ray Lynch, not Lay Wrench. Le Wrench sounds like you're saying the wrench in French. Can you pass me Le Wrench? Again, this is a music channel, not a comedy channel, so... How did I miss Red Hot Chili Peppers the last time I did this? I did every cassette, pretty much in my collection, except for that one. Anyways, we got some R.E.M., we got Monster, and we also got Out of Time from R.E.M., uh, just like I'll be pretty soon out of time. Uh, and before I move on, we got some Rick Astley. Cause who doesn't like Rick Astley? I ask you. This is the famous, the, the album that has the uh, now infamous song, Never Gonna Give You Up on it. And then we have some Red Hot Chili Pepper, What Hits. Red Hot Chili Peppers hits, that's who's hits. Or, that's, anyways, moving on. We got some, how did I, again, I missed. We got Stone Temple Pilots, Striking Violet. I would recommend Striking Violet also. And we got some Super Tramp. How is this not with other Super Tramp? Even in the quietest moments is this album. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Core, and Striking Violet. The World, The Flesh, and The Devil. I actually got this from a tape collector, uh, slash, I think, independent producer who owns his own band and label. So, always happy to support a fellow tape head like myself with their endeavors. 
Uh, then we have another Super Tramp album. I only got this one because I like the design of the case here. It's like, will you listen to Super Tramp with me? No? Okay. Again, poor joke. Landed poorly. I'm sorry. Finally, we're getting into the near end of the collection. Uh, we have... Squeeze, Babylon and On. And we have Yesterday and Today Struck Down. London. Why would you strike down? Oh, it's probably a record label. I got this because I like the blueness of the cassette. And I like how the J card is an appropriate height so you can still see. It does not create a taco around the cassette, which I have previously mentioned. I'm not a huge fan of. So I like the blueness of the cassette. I like I like it when cassettes add a little bit of color to there. I like it when bands and artists and record labels add a little bit of color to their cassettes. Uh, it's like vinyl. It's like colored vinyl. It just it doesn't really do much aside from make your eyes feel happy for a little bit. Uh, then we have some Tesla. This is a um, sort of acoustic jam, Tesla five-man acoustical jam. So if you're into acoustical jams, named after a famous scientist and car, Tesla's for you. Then we have some 21 Pilots with Trench. This is the only album of theirs that I own on cassette. And it's a, whoop, boy, I'm losing everything. It is a yellow cassette, again, because I, whoop, oh. oh, that's on the floor now. Like I said, I like it when, when albums or artists and labels add a little bit of color, so I'll pick that up when I'm done. When I'm done. Uh, we've got some UB40, man. UB40, I like it when how uh, a lot of people think that the song Red Red Wine was done by Bob Marley when it was really UB40 who did it. So we got little bag of read bag bag of dimes. We got little bag of dime from that, and also live from Moscow UB40 in the CCCP. So this must have been before the fall of the Soviet Union. I'm guessing because that was back in '91, I think. If I'm not. 90, ooh, 86, yeah, so that's definitely before the fall of the wall. Alright, so, took a slight break. Where we left off, I think we left off at UB40, and now we're just getting into the sort of miscellaneous cassettes. We have, um, first one we have Men at Work, Two Hearts, because I like the band. And I think they have a lot of, excuse me, good songs, especially the one about them in the Australian Outback doing all that stuff, mate. And then uh, the final one that I have to organize is um, White Snake's Slip of the Tongue. I think I featured this in my last pickups video. So that's pretty much it for, like, bands of... Uh, like single bands, anyways. Uh, then we have, that's probably just a tape head cleaner. Yeah. Uh, we have some soundtracks. We have The Sting from Scott Joplin. Um, we also have Rock and Soul, the best of Rock and Soul, the greatest hit series. This is a sort of a compilation uh, that I guess was popular back in the day. Um, <clears throat> sort of like the playlists you hear now on like YouTube or Spotify or one of those sites. Um, has songs from Eric Clapton, uh, Joe Cocker, Van Morrison, The Box Tops, The Righteous Brothers. Just a, like a, a, a smattering of rock and soul hits from, from that era. And then I think this was one that I found, uh, the the best of the war years. I mean, let's be honest, the war wasn't all that great for either side. Um, 
but we did get some good music out of it, so that's, I guess, a plus. Um, so this was, I guess, from uh, around like the 30s and 40s, around the time of the, the Second World War, um, which is something I like. This this has to have been, re yeah, uh, this was reprinted and re recorded, reissued back in 1995, but so I think the original would have been on like a 45 or an actual like record because I don't think they had cassette tapes back in the 30s and 40s. They probably just had, again, records and uh, FM radio, I guess, AM, AM radio. Yeah, AM radio sounds more likely because FM is more recent. Anyways, um, finally, yeah, we already did the sting. And uh, we have just like a random recording on a blank tape of um, it's just songs from the radio. I marked it as System of a Down because that was the first song that came up, but it's just a random recording of like it was, it's just a bootleg of the radio. Like we just played the radio, hit record, and started recording what was on the radio. It was like System of a Down, Green Day, a couple of other songs. And this, I think I've done a video on this before, but I'll do another one. I will do another one eventually on this. This is mixtape. It's called mixtape. Uh, it's a um, MP3 player, but it also functions as a actual cassette tape. Uh, there's no actual tape, but it goes through this little uh, thing at the bottom. I guess it transmits uh, to the head of the cassette tape and just sort of tricks it into thinking that it's an actual uh, cassette tape in the in the system. These actually spin around. I don't think they actually do anything, but uh, I backed this on Kickstarter uh, a while ago, a few years back. And uh, I just thought it was pretty interesting because you got the, the volume controls, uh, you got the little screen here that tells you what song is playing. So this screen would face out. Uh, this, the screen side is effectively side A. Uh, you don't do anything with side B. But aside, if you're looking at the back, aside from this uh, carbon fiber look and finish and the, the, the word mixtape, you'd probably never know it was anything special. Uh, until you turn it around <clears throat> and also the fact that it has a micro USB port a uh, micro SD card slot and also a headphone port 3.5 millimeter headphone port so you could effectively use this as a portable mp3 player um, this is actually I think more functional than an iPod is because if your car has um, a cassette deck and it. you can load all of your music onto this and then you can like plug your headphones into it when you're walking around you know if you're going to school if you're going to college uh, and you're on a budget you can pick one of these up load all your music onto it and you got a car that still has if you commute to work that is, or commute to school that is uh, and your car has a uh, cassette deck in it you can you can pop your headphones into this listen to school you know, and then when you're on your way home, you can just pop this into the cassette deck and boom, there's your, there's your music right there. You don't have to plug anything in, unplug your headphones and plug something else in, plug this into that and do this and that and the other thing. Um, like we used to have to do. Uh, I remember we had um, like a thing you plugged into the cigarette lighter and you'd, you'd tune it to a certain radio, like 94.5 or 103.3. And then you would hit the the aux button, and then it would play music through your phone, through the radio that way. And they also made devices you could plug into your phone that were just a cassette deck, and you could just plop it in that way and do that. But the, the vehicle I had at that time didn't have a cassette deck; it only had a CD player, and like nothing else in it, besides from the, the bone stock radio. So uh, we were very limited on on types of media we could play and listen to in that vehicle but um this this certainly is a multi multi i think it has bluetooth in it as well i could be wrong i could be very wrong but i think they 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 uh 
this got kind of pushed back because they were putting Bluetooth in it because they raised more money than they thought they would for this. So they, I think, put Bluetooth 4. I could be wrong. Or Bluetooth 3, maybe. Whatever whatever the, the best Bluetooth was at the time, I think they put in here. Uh, if they had a spec sheet as to what was in it, uh, that would be cool. But I'll do a further in-depth video on it. I'll show you how it works, how you can plug it into a, uh, a tape deck and how it works as that, and um, just all that stuff. So in the next video, I'm probably gonna go over my CD collection, because uh, I have, it's probably gonna take a lot of time, because I have way more CDs than I do cassette tapes. So that's going to take a, a lot, a long time. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next video, and until then, keep rocking on.